There are lots of digital SLRs on the market and all produce video, but which one's right for you? Hi, I'm Charlie. A few weeks ago on a, on a YouTube channel I mentioned that I would be putting together a few YouTube videos to help encourage uh, folks to produce their own videos for their own specialisation. I thought here I'd mention a few of the fundamentals such as um, the type of cameras you could buy, uh, the type of microphones you could have um, and also the type of software you might need to help develop your channel. I've been a stills photographer for quite some time and I've always knelt at the altar of Nikon or Nikon if you're in the States um, uh, for all my sort of sports and wildlife type uh, imagery. But when you turn to Nikon for your video, I'm afraid it's, um, it's not very good at all. I'm and I'm sure there are a few uh, keyboard warriors out there who may decide to leave a comment uh, to the contrary, but I have had no joy whatsoever using Nikon DSLRs to shoot video. The, the autofocus is not ideal. There are a lot better systems and much cheaper prices around. This piece of video here is shot on a Nikon D4 and the focus is all over the place, it cannot hold focus and it's completely unreliable and for a £4,000 camera it's not ideal. One thing you do need to consider before you go down the avenue of your own uh, YouTube channel is whether you wish to film yourself and do a piece to camera. The reason is, in your own little field of specialisation like mine is model railways, if I go to a model railway show I'm normally recognised and I take it as a compliment, but other people might not want to be recognised and therefore you wouldn't want to show your face. Um, perhaps if you're a parent with a young child who wants to get involved in YouTube and similarly you might not want, want them to show their face because of the world we live in, let's say. And if you do want to see yourself in the shot, then clearly you need some kind of a monitor and then hopefully you can see uh, me in there. And of course, once you've figured out you're in the, sh in the frame, what you can't do is stare at the monitor because now it seems quite strange. So I'm looking in the monitor rather than straight into the lens. So you use the monitor next to the lens just to make sure you're in the shot rather than stare at it because it kind of makes your viewing public feel uncomfortable as if your gaze is off to one side. If indeed you've come to the decision that you do want your face to be in the shot, here's a couple of cameras uh, that I bought in the past. So for filming ourselves, what options are available? Well, not everyone's budget can stretch to um, a kind of a, a low-end pro-spec camcorder, or perhaps it should be a high-end amateur uh, camcorder, but this is the one I've used in the past for some of my wildlife projects and now I use for YouTube because it will zoom in and out remotely, which is kind of useful. But what I used today, the smaller cameras, are these two because they have a fundamental um, asset which is an articulated screen. So this screen here on the back will actually flip open and you can turn it around and you can face it to the camera. Therefore, you can see yourself as you're filming. Um, I don't actually recommend this. This is a, a Lumix, Pan a Panasonic Lumix, I think it's a G7, and it does suffer from a similar focusing issue, the same with the Nikon. This is currently my kind of weapon of choice, and whenever I'm not using uh, the Sony, I'll always go to this one here, and this is the Canon 80D. So how does this one work well? As I mentioned on the other one, it's, again, it's got the articulated screen, and if I flip it open, and then I flip it right around and there hopefully you can see uh, the camera looking back at it and it has a touch to focus screen which is kind of pretty good but what sets it apart from the rest is if you can hopefully see this and if I look up to you first and then get this camera to zoom in to this screen here come back a little bit and if I touch my face on there, hopefully now this, I can't see that screen, but hopefully you can see that it follows my face. And that is fundamental um, 
to do pieces to camera knowing that your face will actually be in focus. So it's obvious that focusing is a fundamental uh, necessity and if you're in front of the camera rather than behind it, it's absolutely essential. Simply because you don't know that if you're out of focus and you do a piece to camera, you go on for about 10 minutes to find the whole thing's a complete and utter waste of time. If of course you're just using the camera uh, to film something, then as you're filming, you can see if it's in or out of focus, so it's not such an issue. But if you're in front of the camera, then it, it does tend to lead to a great deal of frustration. So moving on from there, what else is important? Well, as I'm sure you'd agree, I think sound is the next most important thing. And as far as choosing a camera is concerned, clearly you want it to record decent sound, but for it to record decent sound, you need an external microphone. The uh, microphones that are kind of integral in these cameras are far from, um, let's say, I think good is the word we're looking for. They're not very good and an external microphone is ideal. And the, this one here is made by Rode, which is a reputable company and it's known as a shotgun mic. It has a, a kind of a, like a, um, what do you call it, a wind suppressor on it. There's the microphone itself and this thing pops over the outside, though you can choose to fit something known as a dead cat, which I'm sure you've all seen. Um, which it simply slides inside and it acts as a decent windbreak. But getting back to the camera, of course, that means that if you, if you were to invest um, in something along the lines of these type of digital SLRs, then it's absolutely fundamental that it has an external microphone port. If it hasn't got an external mic port, move on. Don't waste your money just because it's cheap, just because it's on eBay or whatever. Don't do it. This is absolutely fundamental. Um, I'm sure you've watched many a video on YouTube where the, the audio is absolutely appalling, where the video is good, but the, the, you can hardly make out what's going on because it's uh, filmed on a mobile phone, which is muffled or whatever, but you really, really do need the ability to fit a microphone to your camera. And normally they just fit in straight on the hot shoe, as this one does, wind him on, and there'll be a microphone port on the side and hopefully you can see that and then this one there just pops into there and um, some cameras such as this has the ability then to monitor the audio levels as you go which again you, so you can see if your audio is too high or too low and then once you get the hang of this thing I mean it's it's kind of good to go it, it kind of does what it says on the box this particular microphone I'm not too sure if it's still available there are better ones about um, but it's kind of sprung loaded so you don't get any vibration from the lens and this particular Canon lens is known as a, bear with me, an STM lens which apparently when it zooms it doesn't give off any noise so it's a kind of win-win but you please please if you're going to buy anything and I'm not necessarily buying one of these or, or whatever but before you spend any budget, money budget for the whole thing Right, you've been out there, you've spent your cash, you've bought your camera, you've bought your microphone, you've bought a couple of spare batteries and probably the odd SD card to go with it and you might have even improved the lighting in your little studio. So what's the next thing to think about? Software. Now if you're shooting your videos with a mobile phone or a tablet then editing the video shouldn't be too difficult because most phones and tablets will come with software and if they don't then I'm sure you can download an app. If of course you're intending to take it a stage further and using um, a decent kind of um, DSLR video camera uh, then of course you need decent software um, with which to edit it. So what have we got available? Well there are some free software. There is for PC there's Windows Movie Maker and then if you're a kind of Mac um, Mac guy, then there is iMovie. Both of these um, uh, applications are quite reasonable, they are quite basic, but then they're free. But they're also a good starting point, which, you know, should you wish to take it further. What you don't want to do is spend a lot of money out on software to find actually that making these videos, you know, isn't really your bag. So just, you know, baby steps first, spend a little cash, and, well not sorry, spend a little cash, but try it out before you spend any cash. 
Should you move on um, and you want to get involved more deeply, then Adobe Premiere Elements, um, it comes in at around about £85. You can get student discounts if you can get away with it. Um, and that is the kind of the best basic edit video editing tool that I know of. If you want to take it a stage further, then you get into the pro packages, um, Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Sadly, is £25 per calendar month or, or smidge underneath that. Um, and that's what I use. Or there's Apple's uh, Final Cut Pro 10, which is £299 a copy. Um, but at least you don't have to pay monthly, but then you don't get the upgrades um, in, the, in, the, uh, in the package which Adobe uh, offer with theirs. There's also something called DaVinci Resolve, which comes in at around about £300, but I know nothing of, of that product, so I can't really um, say anything about it. That kind of wraps up today, but what I would like to, to talk about is what we, where, where we go from here. If you're interested in this, then please leave a comment below if you found it useful or if I'm going off in the wrong direction. Um, but I really need to talk about the hardware and the software before we get into technique and that kind of side of things. What I'd like to do next time is I want a, a little bit of boring bit about frame rates and shutter speeds and that sort of um, blah, which um, is fundamental to this and when you live in a, a PAL region or an NTSC region just so you can get the basic settings into your cameras and therefore you get better footage. So there we go. Um, if you click the see more tab below um, there's a couple of links to cameras and stuff that I use um, and you can click on the links and go through to Amazon and see how much they cost just to, before you commit so know, you, know what you're getting into. But as I said previously, really don't go and buy anything until you're sure of the whole price of the package. You don't want to go and buy something that's going to be no use to you. And of course, if you buy a camera, then you've got to buy a lens and you buy a microphone and the SD card um, and all the rest of the peripherals. So go in with your eyes open to see if that's something you really want to go down, uh, down that avenue. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, hopefully I'll see you in a couple of weeks in the next video. In the meantime, there may be a video here and here. If you'd like to become a patron, there should be a button there. And please, please don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you at the next video. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye.